You can sit on my chair if you want me, since uh, you feel more at home. Okay, so how's your day? My day was very tiring because I didn't get any sleep and I was here at 4.30 in order to uh, get ready for this trial and I won today again. Well, congratulations. I did, so. Well, you showed up. Okay, so I have something serious I wanted to talk to you about. I knew, that's why I did <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> what, are you, what are you expecting? I have no idea. Okay, so I've talked to Miguel about this already and you're the second person I've talked to about this. I have to tell you that I'm gay. Okay. Always have been, always will be. Um, I don't believe it's a sin anymore. Like, I used to prescribe okay. to your philosophy, your mom's philosophy, when I was younger, but I don't believe that anymore, and so I don't want to feel ashamed of who I am okay. and what I am. So what are your thoughts? What are my thoughts? I think life is going to be difficult for you. Yeah, I know I'm kind of destroying every hope and dream you ever had for me. No, no, not at all, not at all. That's, I think, and I don't know, I, I'm taking, I, I don't want to say this to encourage you in this lifestyle, but I'm having different thoughts about this being innate or if it's a learned behavior of what I just don't know anymore. Do you want to know my side of it? Go ahead. My story? If you feel, do you even tell it to me? Well, until I was 20 years old, I believed exactly what you and mom believe. I believed that it was not, it was a choice. You could choose to not. Yeah. You could choose to be completely heterosexual and that God wanted you to live in that way. And so for years and years, I would pray, I would look up reparative therapy, I would go everywhere I could possibly find to somehow fix who I am. Yeah. And what, the more I looked up, the more I realized that none of these work. Like, the biggest ex-gay therapy programs in the world have recanted their position that change is possible. So now that they admit that you cannot change your sexuality, you just have to suppress it. That is their yeah. current stance. But then... So I was content with that. I was like, okay, I'm going to suppress it. I will be celibate my entire life. That's completely fine with me. But then I just couldn't, afterwards, I just couldn't justify why it was a sin and why God wanted me to either be straight or be celibate for him. Okay. And then I just couldn't find a justification because when you look at gay people, they don't really do anything bad. They're not like out raping children or... No. No, I agree. Doing anything like that. So I agree. I was thinking, okay, I'm going to be celibate. I'm going to be God's image of what he wants me to be. But all these gay people I know, I'm judging them and condemning them in my own mind. And I was like, I can't do that. I have to look. I have to see if it's actually wrong or right. So because I was not going to accept myself as gay if it was wrong, I was not going to do that. If God did not want me to do that, I was not going to choose to be gay yeah. or whatever. So now I knew it wasn't a choice, but I had to figure out if it was a sin because I didn't want to condemn all these people I knew yeah. and judge them. So I did more research and I realized there's, I found out there was only like seven verses in the Bible that actually mention anything about it. And I've looked at both pros for this argument and against the argument, both sides, I threw out everything I knew because I wanted to be objective and decide for myself. And I looked at lots of different resources from both sides, and I finally just decided that you can interpret these seven verses different ways based on the culture they were written, based on the way they were written, and all of that stuff, and I decided I couldn't see it as a sin anymore. And so when I was 20, that's So it's been almost decided. three full years now. Because it wasn't easy for me at all. Like, oh, I know. This was every single day. I either wanted to end my life or <laughs> I don't know what I was going to do. So, yeah, I... <clears throat> and I and I've, I have had strong suspicions Yeah. for a long time. I couldn't bring myself to talk to you about it because it wasn't any... <laughs> I didn't want to go where I wasn't invited. 
So I would like to share some of the things I found with you if you're willing to look at them sure. openly because sure. I don't want to have you and mom just kind of hate me for the rest of my life. That would be farthest from the truth. I think the most difficult part, if you were deciding not to be celibate, will be accepting a partner. Mm -hmm. That will be extremely difficult. And to be honest, at this point, I don't know if I will ever, but I just don't want to cut off that option okay. completely. I'm really glad you have the courage to do this. <laughs> it was not easy. I understand. It was not easy for me. There's so many times that I've wanted to talk to you about this, but it was not my place to talk to you about something so intimate that you didn't want to want me to go there. I just, I didn't have the invitation. And if... So, as my birthday resident, I just, um, I wanted to request that I send you these documentaries and these websites that convinced me, and I would like you to just look at them with an open mind. I will, because... That's all I can ask. A year ago, I would have never thought that I'd be thinking this way. Everybody in the world knows that uh, you're gay, mm -hmm. except the immediate family. <laughs> yeah. And how long is everybody in the world since you're 20? Well, it, 20 even then, when I finally said, okay, I'm gonna accept this, it took a very long time for me to truly like be okay with it. Just because for so long, all of my life, I was just like, I can't succumb to this and so once I did actually accept it it still took a while before I was comfortable like making it known and I was terrified that you would find out if I told someone and no, so I didn't no. want I thought that that was the problem and I thought that some of the anxiety and hostility towards me was because of this guilt I don't know I never felt really comfortable opening up to your mom especially you just because I knew how you felt, and you made it very clear how you felt. Yeah. So. So. No, I don't hate you, son. Could be part of this from the truth. <laughs> well, thank you for telling me that. And I kind of wanted to, I, I really, I kind of really wanted you, if this was your situation, for you to come forward and tell me. I just didn't want to go there if I wasn't involved. Well, I appreciate that, because I probably would have panicked if you did. If I just would have... You know, actually, in the, just in the last couple of weeks, I've been thinking about writing you a letter so that when you got the letter, you'd have time to consider it before I just burst into your room and say, hey. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Because I'm glad to, I get to tell you on my own terms when I was actually ready. Yeah, I'm glad you did. I thought if I got too close to you and then you ended up rejecting me that it would destroy me, but yeah. No. There was a guy who came to a church at the Free Church and he was a recovered homosexual. The ministry down in the cities, I forget what the name of the ministry was. And I got a brochure from him. And I was going to share that with you, but I thought, oh, I still I couldn't do it. I there were points where I was going to send myself to a reparative program. Yeah. But then so, I knew I'd have to actually tell you guys where I was going. Oh, well, that wouldn't. In fact, when I got that brochure, I wanted to say whatever we can do for you, we will be happy to do that for you. And I, I don't know. Um, I wish that you would still consider that there is a possibility for a reparative program. I spent my entire life looking for something that would work, and it just doesn't exist. Every every psychological and psychiatric association in the world, well, in the first world, says that you can't change it. So uh, when did you first think that um, um, you were gay? Um, retroactively, I remember first figuring out my attractions when I was about nine or ten okay. and then I realized that I was early 
high school, maybe late middle school, so like 13. Okay. And then <clears throat> I didn't accept it until I was 20. And it's that... Um, yeah, I just always kind of knew. I just didn't want to accept it because I know the trauma, and it's it's like, and I'm sure that all of them are, are all people, all gay people are not like this. But I always know that there's so much depression in their life and substance abuse issues. Yeah, and, every study I've read is that. The reason the suicide rates and drug abuse is so high isn't because they are gay themselves, it's just because of society's perception of them, which is what it was for me, because I hated myself for being gay because I knew you wouldn't be okay with it. And at that time I didn't think God would be okay with it. Because it's not being gay itself, it's just like being straight, it's just what I'm attracted towards. Right, it's just yeah. what people think of me. Yeah. And the surprising thing is, every single person I've told so far has been totally okay with it. Like the younger generations have a completely different view of yeah, it, my even the Christians yeah. that I've talked to about it. The majority of the reactions I've ever had are just complete acceptance and love. Plus I don't live in the South, so that makes it easier. <laughs> Doesn't change the way I feel about yourself. It doesn't even break my heart because I've kind of known all the time. I, what hurts is knowing what you're facing ahead of you. And as all us old, bigoted, single minded people drop off the face of the earth. It'll have a whole different generation of yep. people who are more accepting. And <laughs> I know I've had my entire life to get used to this, and now I have to wait for you to kind of get used to it. Oh, I don't know if it's going to really change anything. <laughs> well, that's good, because... It wouldn't, I... I... You didn't surprise me, son. I'm glad it's... Glad it's over. Very glad it's over. Very, very glad it's over. Miguel and I were talking about how that now she knows everything about me, we can actually get closer. Because there's no wall that I put up to keep everyone out. Yeah. Is that why you kept everyone, everyone out? I had to 90% of the reason was really? that. Yeah. Oh, man. Because I knew how you felt about the issue. And so every time the topic came up, I was like, yep, I have to keep separating myself. So just in case I have to, I can just leave. So I'm going to love you so much. <laughs>